All right, there. What's up, guys? This is episode 12 of Young Lifters Talk, and we're here with... Introduce yourself. Oh, um... Angus Whitby. Um, most of you guys will know me as Barbell Daddy, though. That's my Instagram. <laughs> well, it's, it's good to be on. Thank yeah. you guys for inviting me on. I appreciate it. Of course, man. Yeah, of course. Happy to have you on. So, like, introduce yourself. That. Like, how old are you? Like, what is your, like, connection uh, to powerlifting? And all that stuff. Where are you from? All that. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I'm from Australia. Pretty, pretty irrelevant country when it comes to powerlifting. But, um, I mean... I turned 16 two weeks ago. Mm. Before that, I was 15. Uh, I competed in the 93s. So I haven't competed in a while. But yeah, I mean, I won nationals. I beat all the sub juniors as a 15 year old last year. Mm. So I've gotten a lot stronger since then as well. Uh, I guess that's my connection to powerlifting. Yeah, yeah. So how'd you get into the really. training? So you were born in 2008? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, mm, cool. Yeah, same cool, as me. Cool. But how did you get into, like, training and then eventually, like, powerlifting if you're so young? Well, I mean, my like, my sports background, I've always done a lot of sports, right? Mm. I've always, like, I played basketball. I was a national-level swimmer as well. Ah. And I can accredit a lot of my swimming success to that because mm. <laughs> that's probably the reason why my bench is so good. Like, it's definitely ah. my best lift. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's all from the swimming, you know, the the dealt work. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I originally got into the gym, like, you know, you guys had, we had COVID lockdown towards yeah, yeah. the middle of 2021, mm -hmm. and I kind of, I became pretty fat after oh, it man. because I wasn't doing any exercise, but I was still eating so much. So I kind of just, I can't, I was like, fuck this, I'm going to get back. Get, can I, like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. My bad, my bad. No, um, no, no, I was like, screw this. I'm going to get back into shape. So originally I got into the gym to benefit swimming. Yeah. Uh, eventually that developed. Like I found out about powerlifting like June 2022. Mm. I'm about eight months in the gym there. Like eight months in the gym. Yeah. The gym wasn't even my priority as a sport. Like I was swimming 16 hours a week then. Oh. And... Mm. Yeah, I was swimming 16 hours a week. I was yeah. only gymming like four or five times a week and I wasn't even training hard. I still managed to like bench 110 kg in that. Yes, yes. I was deadlifting That's like crazy. 190. So like I wasn't even like training for strength at that point and I was I was like decently strong. And then, yeah, I met this powerlifter because we have a powerlifting gym. I met this powerlifter and he was like, you should try it, bro. And I was like, I mean, why not? So, mm. I mean, I ran a powerlifting block. Like, I started powerlifting, like, I say October, November 2022. Mm. And yeah. I ran a powerlifting block. My numbers were, like, 110 bench, 130 squat, 180 or 190 deadlift. And within, like, six weeks, I just skyrocketed. I went to, like, 130 bench, 170 mm. squat, and, like, 220 deadlift. So, mm. I was like, I mean... Yeah, yeah, I may as well give it a <laughs> shot. So yeah, I mean, I got into a powerlifting comp in like the first like five six months of my powerlifting journey. Um, mm -hmm. it was a pretty bad meet. I didn't peek into it at or anything. I kind of just uh, like, yeah, coach, <laughs> it was pretty bad. Way. Yeah, no coach, no no like um proper peaking block or anything. Yeah, I kind of yeah. just did my own thing. I mm. I maxed out on everything the week before it. Oh. So like. <laughs> I was, I was like, I didn't realize how much that was going to screw me up, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was all right. I mean, yeah. it gave me enough of a drive because I think I went six out of nine at that meet. Oh, wow. And I was like, nah, I gotta, I gotta come back from that, you know? So yeah, you yeah I mean, uh, I think it was a 180 or 185 squat. It was 127.5 at bench. I, mm. And that was only my opener. I went to um 132.5 for my second, and I failed it. And then mm. I went, I think I went up to 135 because I was like, I don't only want 132.5, and I failed that as well. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was 185 squat, 127.5 bench, and 227.5 deadlift. Mm. That's so, good. Yeah. What did you weigh? Uh, 84 kilos at that. Yeah, meet. that's that's very good. 
and that was, that was with like five five months of powerlifting training so uh, i already had a lot of people coming to me like oh you you got potential you know so i mean i i did get injured between that and nationals oh, but man. i put a muscle in my back because i i maxed out on deadlifts three days in a row so <laughs> So that's the type of stuff I was doing, you know, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. You were new to the sport, so you would adapt to it anyways, but... Yeah, yeah, exactly, but, um, like, what I did was, I pulled, yeah, I did a PR, and then I did tandem deadlifts with my friends the next day, and then I maxed out the day after that as well, oh and God. I ended up pulling a muscle in my back, but it. that held me back a bit, um... Uh, that was about in may june 2023 so may uh, june last year and then yeah i mean usapl moved to australia and uh, they came out with they came out with usapl australia nationals oh my god and i was like <laughs> yeah i know that sounds so bad right <laughs> but uh, I registered up for that. That was end of September 2023, and I was playing basketball. This was like 10 weeks out, and right. I fractured my ankle. So <laughs> I fractured my ankle like 10 weeks out, and yeah. um, I literally went to my physio the next day. I'm like, what can I do to get back to this as soon as possible? <laughs> and he was like, you can't. Oh my God. <laughs> and he was like, you should probably just pull out, but... Uh, I didn't listen to him because it only really affected my squat because mm -hmm. the fractured ankle, I literally couldn't get to depth. But luckily, like, I wasn't hitting depth in training. And then, like, two weeks out, mm. my mate was like, oh, do you want to try my heels? So I'm, like, on the heaviest squat of my prep. I try heels, I hit depth, and I'm like, right. I'm, I'm still going to nationals. I'm still going to nationals. Hey. And then I pulled, like, a nine out of nine meet at nationals. So... Hey, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty good. And um, I went 225 squat, mm. 145 bench, mm. and 266 deadlift. So I, there, there was a bit of room on the squat and the bench probably. You pull sumo? Uh, no, I pull conventional. Okay, okay, good. Mm. Because uh, yeah. I've experienced the same. Like uh, Before my like uh, regional meet last year, I think, or two years ago, I, I, I like fell on my, uh, I don't know, you know, you know, like moped. Oh, yeah, 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 I, I, I fell on that, like, yeah, it was icy, and the day before the meet, I went to school, and I fell on my, like, moped, so I also, like, uh, fractured my ankle, but, uh, <laughs> like, that's, I didn't realize that when I was lifting, because, you know, you don't use your ankle that much. Except when you're like squatting, but yeah, yeah, it's... your your ankle is literally just a mobility thing. Like yeah, exactly. It's not if you pull sumo, you're so... fucked because I tried to like pull sumo yeah. and it hurt, but uh, conventional <laughs> was fine. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, my fractured ankle, like I could get to depth, but mm -hmm. it hurt to get to depth. Uh, I got on the day and I was just squatting with pain, but I was like, it's only, I'm like mentally preparing myself for each lift i'm like just do this one just do this one it's mm. one closer till you yeah. don't have to do any more so that that was kind of my mindset going into squats and then my opener moves good my second moved good and then my ankle was really starting to play up then and i was like just get this last one out and then you're yeah. there's no more there's mm -hmm. no more pain you know mm. so that was kind of my mindset going into that i had a pretty good meet uh I had a bit of room on each of the lifts, I reckon, like maybe 2.55. But uh, I wanted to play more conservative to my total because I learned from my first meet. I was like, yeah. yeah, you should probably worry more about your total than each indi trying to PR on each individual lift. You know what I mean? So yeah. I had to like put the ego aside. But So what total yeah, do you hate? That, that, you, you won nationals, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I weighed... 88.2 okay. and i totaled 636 i think mm. but yeah so he went from 210 to 235 to 250 oh my god and i was like you can lick it i'm gonna out total you by one kilo That's so i cool. go for 266 and it was also um it was also a deadlift world record in that weight class so i was like two in one mm. and yeah Good. 
I mean, I got that. And yeah, I mean, fast forward to now, a total's close to 700. Yeah. But I, I, I was supposed to have nationals in like three weeks because mm. I had ambitions to compete internationally this year. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I know I've, I've had way too many setbacks, man. Like I went on holiday for about six weeks from Whoa. December oh. to January. I didn't bring any of my equipment. So mm. I was just oh. lifting beltless, sleeveless like once a week because uh, I do think family, like I prioritize time with my family, you know, sure. and vacation's yeah. the time I really get with my family. So yeah, I mean, I came back a decent bit, bit weaker uh, and I definitely lost a few kilos as well. Like before I left, I got to about 92 kilos. Mm. And that was my morning fasted weigh-in. And then by nighttime, Way in fully clothed, got to like 88 oh. by the time I came back. Oh, no. So I took a big hit on that. And I, but I had nationals in like three months. It's supposed to be in three weeks, and I was like, mm. I don't, I don't care. I'm still gonna. I just, I'm just gonna hard bulk. I'm just gonna train. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Like nationals, three weeks. My training's been going really well. But the other day. I was doing incline dumbbell press and I, I was mm. pressing 60s, like 60 kilos in each Whoa, hand. What and the fuck? I fucking, <laughs> I, I threw one of them because usually when I press, I like throw them in front of me when I finish the set oh because there's, I, I don't want to like, I don't want to like controllably drop it down. Too much force exerted. So <laughs> I, I threw them in front of me and I threw one on my foot. Damn. Oh my God. Bro. And, and yeah, I was like, then I woke up the next day and I was like, I literally can't move my foot. There's no ankle mobility anymore. Oh and I went, I went to the doctors and he was like, yeah, you pinched a nerve in your foot. So oh. it's pain free until I get to a certain point And I literally can't go past that point until this heals. So mm. I don't, it's How many reps bad. did he do with 60 kilograms? Uh, like eight. <laughs> Man, that's that's insane. How the fuck? <laughs> you must bench for like two hundred then. I bench one seventy two point five. Oh, okay, okay, more. okay. But have but you still, like had to pull out, or are you still just waiting to see how it gets? Uh, here's the problem, right? Now, this this year I'm competing in the federations. That's a, that's the IPF affiliate in Australia, yeah, yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. it's actually more competitive yeah and if I, I do think i'll be able to heal before nationals but that means i'd be coming into a meet unpeaked on deadlifts unpeaked on squats and only peaked on bench and mm. i just don't think i can put up a performance that's enough to win with the time mm. frame that i've given and if i don't win then that's like no international at all so mm. i thought since I still have this fractured ankle lingering around, like I can still feel it when I squat, when I get to depth, every rep, I still just feel it. It just, but the pain has slowly gone away day to day. Mm. And I, I just thought, I was like, what if I just gave myself some genuine time to recover my body mm. so I'm in exactly. full health, so training can go well uh, again. But we have two I'm years left like, as a sub junior. No rush. Yeah. So, until end of 2026 so yeah i mean the plan for me moving forward is i want to compete as a 105 next year yeah, for sure. so and 2026 so what i'm gonna do is right now i'm cutting and mm -hmm. i've taken a bit of a break from the compound movements because mm. apart from bench i love bench too much to like <laughs> not bench All so right. I, have, I have to keep benching but mm. squats and deadlifts bye bye I'm just cutting for a bit, and then I'm going to really slowly bulk up to the 105. So yeah, hopefully I can get to the 105s at like 12% body fat. Mm. That would be, right. that would be great. How tall are you? I think that uh, I'm 6'2". Oh, yeah. Then you definitely, that'll definitely do you good to be 105. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, you're going, you guys are, are you guys both going to Worlds next year? Mm, I mean, it depends. In Sweden... It's not just winning your weight class. They have to choose you too because they pay for your flights and stuff. So they're really selective. 
So they only oh. pick like one or none sub junior. Yeah, they don't pick yeah, like yeah, more I than two sub juniors. So I don't, I don't ever see any of you guys at Worlds, man. No, no, it's no, it's, it's really like hard if, as a sub junior in Sweden. But we actually heard like uh, uh, not long ago they maybe are considering adding a new rule that uh, you must pay for yourself, but you only need to win your weight class and then you can go to Worlds or Euros. Yeah. Yeah, so next that's, year, that's, but that's how ours is. I yeah, mean, most countries are like that. Well, yeah, I mean, from my position, I'd rather them pay for everything. Yeah, but because I I do believe I would get selected, but it's it is a bit annoying. It is a bit annoying, but yeah, we just have to win and we have to meet the total, and then mm. when the international competition registrations come up we can just register if we won nationals we're eligible to register and then they just mm. take you through that process and nice. you're there yeah. that's nice but all all they pay for is they don't even give you an spd belt they give you like all the other spd equipment apart from the belt <laughs> oh. and then you have to pay for flights and expenses all yourself mm. okay. so do you guys have a it is pretty SPD bad. singlet like a, a Bro, we need to buy our spd stuff yeah so they they give you every piece of SPD equipment apart from the belt. Uh, uh. But the belt you're probably going to have anyway if you compete at nationals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you're going internationally and you don't have an SPD belt, that's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I mean, it is kind of expectant, but I also don't blame Australia for that because Australia is just not a big sport for powerlifting yet, you know? Yeah. I no. do think... We like, definitely don't have yeah, no. much people. Yeah. But also, like, bro, these American boys, like Dylan Johnson, Jack Reynolds, mm, bro, mm. I can tell you that the total they're going to put up at Nationals is going to beat our open 83s. So it's like, <laughs> right. Australia shouldn't be paying for... <laughs> Australia shouldn't be paying for our expenses because we're shit. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. That's yeah. true. That's true. That's true. It's it's all due respect, but like it's it's the truth, you know. Yeah. If two American sub juniors are gonna come and beat our opens, why why should they pay for our expenses? Mm. We shouldn't even get to go. No, that's I mean true. I've heard you guys have a, had a lot of like problems with the federation that it's like changing like <laughs> once a year, right? Because uh, what do you have now? Like Australian Powerlifting Alliance, that wasn't a thing like a yeah. year ago, right? Yeah, no, no. So the the one before was Australian Powerlifting Union. Mm. That's been around for like 10 plus years. It's been the IPF affiliate for probably the whole time international competition has been a thing in Australia. But the the interesting thing is they had this whole um case and uh, like how shit the federation was run oh. and how corrupt it was. So they literally just pulled out of being an IPF affiliate because they, in a way they got exposed. You know what I mean? Their yeah. board was terrible and they were like mm. abusing, they were abusing their power and they were also abusing the athletes. So Damn. a bunch of people came out about that and they were like, yeah, well, screw this federation. So a bunch of better people have come out and made Australian Powerlifting Alliance. Mm. I do believe it's a much better run federation. Like Australian Powerlifting Union, you'd have nationals. Bro, you wouldn't even know when you're lifting till like three days before the comp. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> like, it was so bad. So mm. I don't I don't mind the switch, but you are right. As there is there's so much drama with the lifting in mm. Australia and it's it's very unnecessary drama as well. Like we're not even a good country, so <laughs> we don't <laughs> we don't deserve to have that. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, we complain <laughs> when we don't get our like uh, a list of competitors and times like if if it's like four weeks before we're complaining. <laughs> but you guys are getting it like days before. That's crazy. Bro, I kid you not. Even Australian Powerlifting Alliance. What is it? Sixth of April. So I was supposed to compete in three weeks. The the competition schedule came out yesterday. Mm. Oh my. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> your nationals is it like twenty seventh uh, April. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. ours too. And ours came out like two weeks ago. Mm. Bro. 
This is three weeks early and it's considered very organized because that's like oh how my. bad it was with ABU. So I do think it's very interesting. And I mean, what what weight class are you boys in? I'm, I'm 74. And he's 74. You guys think you're moving up anytime soon? Yeah, we yeah, both man. started as 59s and then he's gone up two and I've gone up one because he's been doing powerlifting a year more than me. Oh yeah, no, that's that's completely One fair. I, I feel you. That's that's the plan. Till we get to like 83, 93. <laughs> Bro, if I do that, I'm gonna be 2026, 120. <laughs> the the thing is, here in Sweden, we can't we can't complain because uh, instead of going to like worlds and euros and stuff, we have another international comp uh, like Nordics, so we can be- compete oh, against yeah, you know Denmark, that. Finland. Yeah. Uh, that stuff. So, if you win, I think uh, you need to win, and then you have to be a bit, little bit lucky. Uh, but you will get picked out for that, and then next year you need to do that, and then go to worlds. Like, yeah, you have to get Nordics oh, that's first, like the whole and then, process, bro. then after. So, I think it's for both me and Danny. Like, uh, we have Nats now in three weeks. Uh, my plan is like, if I win. Uh, I will stay in the 74s for Nordics and then move up to 83s, of course. But if I lose, I'm going in the 83s directly. Yeah, I need yeah. to book up. Because <laughs> we're, so ju- we're so young, we, we can put up, can put on so much muscle mass. So Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. And if, if you're going to the 83s next year, I mean, that that's definitely... Re- Are you still a sub-junior next year? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. 07. I'll, I'll be smashing Jack Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a very no, ambitious no, goal. No, 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 no. That's a very Uzi. ambitious goal. Uzi. But I mean, I think I think it's good because even you're like me when we're, we're not competing at Worlds until next year. But I think the very good thing is all these American, these really good American sub juniors, yeah. they're gonna come in and just sweep the current like world records, yeah, all the totals. They're gonna destroy them like Elliot, bro. Yeah, Elliot, man. Yeah, we had him last episode. Was with Elliot? That, that was yeah. That man is an absolute <laughs> specimen. You know, like, like you no, know, I was so hyped junior. because. Uh, the world record squat for 74s right now is like 240. Two, and we two can break. Yeah. No, but in the, oh, sub- the open, no, but for sub the open squat world record is 288.5. Yeah, 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 but Timothy sub, got that sub, at Sheffield. Sub, he's got, he's gonna break that. Yeah, 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 yeah. As a But you know we have perks still, so that will be more. Yeah. But, if it wasn't for perk, bro, Elliot would be. Elliot yeah. would like. I feel like. Perk Perk's performance at Open Worlds is gonna overshine Elliot's, even though, mm. in my opinion, Elliot said he wanted mm-hmm. to put up eight twenty at nationals, yeah, like exactly. eight twenty <laughs> as a seventy four I mean, sub junior. I think it, Elliot and Perk's performance will be pretty close because Perk will not go all out. Yeah, he has to save. Up Perk went eight thirty nine point five at nationals, but yeah, at Worlds also... he, he won't go uh, over uh, like eight twenty yeah, five, I think, because Shell. Yes. I want the Sheffield money. Yeah, yeah. 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 But how Which is, is uh, com- completely fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, What's you, up? You've been saying uh, so you didn't have a coach and stuff. You're just maxing out. But now, like I don't know, like most recent months, have you been like actually on a training program? If so, like yeah, how does no. your training look? Like what do you do on each day? <laughs> like. Um. I mean, yeah. Now, now I got a coach. Mm. Um. He's he's very low key. He doesn't he doesn't even use social media. But one thing to note is that he's very strong. Um, me and him launched the website, launched our coaching, everything. We do everything mm. together. So yes. it's cool. it's it's very good though, right? So like this guy, he took his deadlift from one thirty to three hundred in his first six months of training. So oh, what the like, fuck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. How does your training look right now? Like, what do you do on uh, uh, which day besides when you're cutting now? Like on YouTube. Yeah, so that that's that's his credentials. So, what I usually do, uh, my training, I, I'm training, I'm changing it around a bit now. But previously, it was Monday was primary squat, and I think it was it was an accessory bench day, mm-hmm. and then Tuesday was accessory deadlift. 
and then secondary bench day, and then Thursday was secondary squat. So well, accessory because I was doing high bar. Yeah. And then. So when you say accessory deadlift, you mean like secondary deadlift, or do you mean deadlift yeah, accessory? Except- so, so when I say accessory, I mean like pause, deadlift, stiff legged, oh, okay, etc. Okay, okay. So like if a variation. I say secondary, it's just yeah. If I say secondary, it's just normal deadlifts, just okay, not yeah. my primary, you know. Oh, okay. So okay. Monday was primary squat, accessory yeah, yeah. bench. Tuesday was accessory deadlift, secondary bench, and then Thursday was accessory squat, accessory bench as well and then saturday was always primary deadlift primary bench mm. cool so i mean that's how my training looked yeah uh, i was also squatting on saturday so i was squatting three times a week ah, so but yeah that. that's cool mm, nice priming the cns you feel me yeah <laughs> yeah yeah cool <laughs> but yeah i mean that's how it was structured. I think we're going to change it around a bit, just the training days to match mm. other things that I have going on. So mm. I think I'm excited. You know, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Like I, I wanted to keep, compete at Commonwealth Champs in October this year, but oh, yeah, yeah. It, it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm glad because I have more time to bulk up to the 105s For now because sure. I was going to have to stay in the 93s if, um, yeah, no. if I stayed to compete at com champs this year not because i couldn't have qualified as a 105 but because one of my friends was competing as a 105 mm-hmm. and our plan was that we were all going to go together so mm. like i had a friend i have a friend in the 74s his name's will mm. and then i have one of my friends breaky in the 83s he's one of my very close friends mm-hmm. he's only been powerlifting he's only been powerlifting for six months he's an 83 and he's mm putting up close to 600 now nice. so like it's actually pretty good and then yeah. one of my mates in the 105s as well so the plan was always to just all of us go commonwealth champs together mm. well i'm pretty sure will was going to go to worlds but yeah we wanted to all go commonwealth champs but i mean i'm glad it gives me more time for sure to bulk up to the 105s and okay. the strength gain from the bulk is going to be a blessing mm. Yep. It's gonna be great, yep. you know. That's sure, nice. You guys would know how that feels as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Stronger about, and stronger. Yeah, talking a lot about like weight classes and stuff now. Like, how does your nutrition look when you're like going up? Like, do you track? How much do you eat? Like, yeah, what yeah. Is your, I do. Yeah. I, I track. I meal prep. I, I do everything. Mm. So, Oof. right now with my cut, I'm doing intermittent fasting oh, and. Right. What that looks like is I don't even I don't eat until about twelve. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's it's pretty. I mean, it's pretty chill to be honest. Like so yeah. when you like don't eat breakfast. first. Yeah. Well, when you don't eat first thing in the morning, you find that you're not actually as hungry during the day. So it's no. pretty easy to cut when you fast in the morning. But usually, when I'm on my bulk. So here's the thing, right? I do a lot of cardio because I do combat sports. I do basketball. Uh, so okay. So I do a lot, right? So my my maintenance is about three thousand six hundred calories. Mm, yeah. Right. And that's cool. when I'm bulking, it pushes about four point five mm, to five. Yeah, that's good. It's just a range. Like, I don't have to do 4,500. It's like between 4,500 and 5,000. Mm, and right, right. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. It's good stuff. And, good stuff. Yeah, I mean, the guidelines just keep the fat under 200 grams, ideally around 150. Protein yeah. goes about 300. Oh. And the carbs is like... The carbs is like 500, 600. Mm. I'm... Damn. It's very heavy on the carbs. Yeah, that's, sure. that's good. Uh, yeah, I mean, even though, like, you guys will see 4,500 calories and you guys will be like, fuck. Nah, but, nah, nah. I'm that's good, you know. Donnie, he's like 4K, I think. <laughs> nah, and I'm he's like 3. 6. 6. And I'm a 66. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but for yeah sure, I that's, mean, that's, good. That's, that's the thing, right? 4.5 is, I gain like half a kilo a week from 4.5, mm. which... Which really isn't that much, you know, so it's very interesting, but Alpha Kilo I mean, a week. A week. Yeah. That's pretty much. 
that's like two per month. So that would take you like half a year to go up a weight class. Yeah, right? except I I slow it down. I yeah, slow it down because cool. mm. eventually, eventually my body conditions to four point five, and yeah, then the weight then gains way up. slower. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I'll go up five hundred grams for like the first three four weeks, but after that, I'm only putting like one hundred two hundred on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's more like it. And yeah, I don't I don't like putting too much fat on because sure. no. to be honest with you, apart from 2021 lockdown, apart from that, I have never been above like 12% body fat. Yeah, so yeah. I, I like to keep very lean. Mm. So like if I ever notice myself getting a bit too fat, I'm going to be like to my coach, I'm doing a mini cut, you know? Oh <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yeah, you know how it is, but... Yeah. Mm. Is it hard for you to eat or do you like not really struggle with that much food? Nah, bro. So when I was a national swimmer, swimming 16 hours a week, like, bro, you don't understand how physically demanding swimming mm. is until you do it. You know, like I was training 16 hours a week and bro, I was having, I'm not joking. I was having like 6,000, 6,500 <laughs> calorie days and I was putting on no weight. I was putting on no weight at all. Mm. Like, I'm, I started the gym in November 2021, mm. and I was that, that whole time I was swimming just as much. I was eating at least 5K. I did not eat less than 5K mm. unless I was sick. Mm. And from about February to October when I quit, I put on about four kilos, and that uh, was eating five to 6K a day. Yeah. Mm. So, I respect that. I, I've I've never known what it's like to not be able to just look at food and eat it all Damn. without a problem. You know? Damn. So yeah, I can relate. I can <laughs> I, I, I mean as a former <laughs> as a former fat kid I can, I, I can relate, man. Nah, I mean if, if you were fat and you've got down to like if you got down to what, fifty nines, I respect that bro. Like that's Yeah yeah, I mean I, I was I, I was fat but I was short, so I, I was like my first that's, maybe that's like the one worst and a half possible bro. Yeah, one and a half year of powerlifting. I didn't do any accessories because my pro coach didn't program it. So uh yeah, I mean No accessories for the first no. year and a half. I, I only oh. did like leg press. Like my first year of gym I did like, you know, bodybuilding of course, but when I started powerlifting I like stopped all that. I maybe did some like, you know, um, dumbbell presses and leg presses, but that was it, really. Mm. It's yeah. Well, I don't know. No, but now you learn. Now, you no, learn no, no, now, now I do accessories, of course. Mm. Yeah, yeah, of course. But how do you find that once you actually started doing accessories? Do you like find it hard, or was like that a good thing that you were training without accessories for so long? I mean, uh, I would not say it was a good thing, but I don't struggle with. It's been hard. Uh, yeah. I've always, I've always been like, if it, if it's on my, uh, if it's on my program, I will do it. Like, yeah, you need yeah, to work hard to be good. Of mean. course, uh, I'm not. Back down I don't skip accessories, but yeah, uh, like, mm. I, I got first into accessories when I watched, you know, Marcellus YouTube videos, Soul yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I started programming them for myself. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, yeah. Yeah, me, me personally. Swarfest is really, yeah, he's really sure. good. I love him. Me, I'm basically the opposite. I've always done like maybe three to five sets of a powerlifting movement, and then I do like 20, 30 sets of bodybuilding. So I've always just had a lot of accessories and a little bit of. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I'm yeah. with Lucas, bro. When I <laughs> when I start like when I started gym before I started powerlifting training. As soon as I got into powerlifting training, I was doing whatever accessories I was given. But before that. I'd go in the gym on a leg day and it'd suddenly turn into a push day, you know? Oh so, <laughs> no. And I was, I was like, I didn't, bro, I had never done a high bar squat. I had never done pause deadlifts. Oh, I'd never done mm. any of this, any of these accessories. It was always just raw lifts, you yeah. know? Mm. But to be honest, I think that probably transitioned into my powerlifting positively because of like, 
I I wasn't even wearing a belt or sleeves yeah. for squats. Yeah. Wasn't wearing a belt for deadlifts. So that just got my bracing and everything good before sure. I even started powerlifting. So I like again I credit that I, I credit that to swimming. Like that mm. I would not be here if I'd never swum, and that's crazy to think about. Yeah. So most swimmers are jacked. I mean. That's a good sport. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it definitely gave me, like, a good foundation to build yeah. upon, you the know? Shoulders, the shoulders you get from swimming, from swimming, that's crazy. I mean... Yeah, exactly. I, I get told my shoulders are a strong point. People people used to tell me I have really big rear delts, and I'm like, cool, I've never trained them in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it so surprises it's... me to hear, like, uh, that you ate so much as a swimmer. Because I go to a sports school... And uh, so I'm like the only powerlifter. Everyone else is like football, basketball. So there's a lot yeah, of swimmers. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. I yeah, go to yeah. a sports school yeah, with yeah. the and exact same. All the swimmers, they're just like, they're like skinny, don't eat anything, but they're really good at swimming. Like I'm sitting there yeah. at lunch with two plates and they're like eating like half. <laughs> Being the only oh, that's, that's crazy. I mean, you guys know Michael Phelps, surely you've... Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Like the Olympic, the yeah, yeah, Mike Fox, the you know, of the, you know. bro. When he was on prep for the Olympics, he was eating ten thousand calories a day. Oh my god, he's eating yeah, like a strong man, good. like Eddie. Holmes that's good. Yeah, he's eating like a strong man. Uh, he was also training a lot more than me. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, when you that. do such a sport as like swimming or football, like a cardio sport, you can train, or like MMA, you can train, you can train infinitive amount. You can train how much you want. Yeah. It's not like powerlifting yeah. when you train yeah, like three you hours mean. a day you, max. I mean, you can train like for, 10 hours a day. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for swimming, there's eventually a point where it's too much, but yeah, it's like yeah. that for every mm. sport. But I do get your point. There's, You can do a lot more training for swimming than you can for yeah. powerlifting. Like yeah. powerlifting, you could be like, oh, I go four times a week. And if I go more than that, then it's going to um, be just, detrimental to yeah, my gym performance. But... Whereas you can you can swim like two three times a day and be like this is helping me improve, exactly. you know. Yeah. But I do think it's very interesting that you say your swimming friends do not eat because yeah. I have a few swimming friends, and this guy brings like a whole, you know those you know those bags where you put like um ice packs like in them, yeah, yeah, and then you just put a bunch of food in them. You mm. usually like get that if you're going on a picnic or something mm. bro my friends who do swimming they get one of those just fill it up with food At the end of the school day it's all gone it's all gone yeah. and it's oh crazy like one of one of my friends would like he swims more than me because he's like one of the top in australia mm. so so he's like really good and he trains a lot and very hard and like this kid shows me his macros he's like average day it's like 6500 calories <laughs> it's like almost 300 grams of fat and i'm mm. like you are 10 percent body fat how how <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th i guess that's like the perfect thing to do before you start powerlifting because then you're like i'm an eating is easy Oh, and uh, training a lot, that's easy exactly. too. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why, like, people people always ask me, they're like, why, wh why didn't you get into powerlifting earlier? And I'm mm. like, bro, I am so grateful I got into powerlifting when I did because it was honestly the perfect time. If I got into it earlier, I wouldn't have these fundamentals I got from swimming that yeah. transitioned positively into powerlifting, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, you're I am, 16. You did... It's not late at all. <laughs> Some people get into it in their 20s or 30s, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. I mean, with social media standards, 16 exactly. is, like, late. Yeah, that, that's like, true. Dylan, Dylan Johnson ben, was squatting four plates at 13, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Mm. Like, bro, I, w I don't even know what I was doing at 13. I was smoking weed. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, like, I think uh, Perk got into powerlifting when he was, like, 13, 14. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And I don't... I think that's the thing that people don't realize about Perk is, like, bro, He's this guy... This guy years. won... Yeah, this guy won sub junior worlds, bro, back in the day. Like, mm, yeah. he won... And then he went to equipped. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Austin Perkins been in the game for so long, man. Like mm. people, people don't see that dedication he has. So, exactly. I think it's something we can definitely respect, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. It's like you said, most, m I, uh, I think most powerlifters that are good, they all came from a sport. I mean, like in America, it was mostly like, you know, American football and yeah, uh, exactly, baseball. Exactly. Yeah. And then, but, often I mean, like from the lockdown, they couldn't continue pursue their sport and then they start powerlifting. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know the Great Britain boys like Joshua and Goka and Nonso, mm -hmm. those boys, they um, they rugby. were doing footy before, I'm pretty yeah. sure, rugby. Yeah, exactly. That is such a good sport for just Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, that's good. Uh, the only like, powerlifter I can think of off the top of my head that didn't come from a sport was probably Hamza. Mm. That's, that's true. Hamza's yeah. always just been there. I don't even... Yeah, I think he yeah, got I mean, burnt I think... out after all this success. But he's probably going to come back. I don't know. I don't know. You Like, it's... I don't think it's my place to speak on it. But to be honest, I think he just lost his drive because he had so much pressure coming into Worlds. Yeah. It's like, bro, everyone thought he was going to absolutely blow out Nonso on the total, you know? Like, you know what I mean? Like, Nonso yeah. was the underdog. Yeah. Hams, yeah. Everyone was like, Hams is going to total more than any other sub junior. And he just I was one of them. flopped. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was one of them. Yeah. yeah, I was one of them. I would look at this guy. Bro would post like 880 kg total for yeah, doubles. We, we thought he was yeah. gonna go bro. Out, like Bob level, like you know Bob Matthews. Yeah, we thought he was gonna be like the next Bob Matthews. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you know what? I I have a lot of respect for what he's done because what he did is he monetized the platform that he built from yeah. how strong he was. He made so much money, and now he's just chilling, you know? Yeah, yeah. in Dubai. <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. You know, game respects game, you know? So Yeah, yeah. yeah. talking about all these like, guys, who would you say is your, like, favorite lifter or your, like, biggest inspirations? I mean, as far as sub-juniors go, it... It, it was Hamza for a very long time. I mm. think I look at I look at Elliot a lot more now. But mm, for, sure. for me, like when when I got into powerlifting, well, not when I got in, probably like early to mid last year, I, I saw Hamza because I've always thought about the long run for powerlifting, and I was like, I want to be a one hundred five for my last for sure. year, and then. Hamza was always that, like, goal for me, you know? I was like, I want to get as strong yeah. as him, and I want to beat his records. So that's kind of how it was for me. But I feel like I, I don't think – like, I think I'm going to beat his total next year. I think I'll, I'll mm. break his deadlift world record and his total world yeah. record. But I don't think I'm going to take pride in that because him winning that was like – him on his worst game. day mm. beat everyone on their best day and that's that's the interesting thing right if i just beat his total by like not much which is what it's going to be in 2025 like i can't take pride in that you know no i mm. think i uh yeah as far as the lifters go like sub juniors wise is definitely like hamza and elliot like uh, hamza really set a benchmark for me so yeah, i mean talk about hamza you're like three inches taller than him so maybe in, when you're like in the open, you could even be a 120 and go like Nonso stuff. Because Nonso, he's only, he's two inches taller than you, I think. Like 6'4", six, 6'3". Four, six, so Nonso is crazy, off. bro. Nonso yeah. is crazy. <laughs> I don't know. You can maybe is crazy. that kind of stuff. But in the open, like Nonso who would you crazy, say then? In the opens. It's a very interesting question. To be honest, mm. it, it and it's it's a very it's a very good question. I I do really like uh, that underdog story. So the the interesting thing is when when the Sheffield like the, the probability of people winning yeah. and everyone thought Jesus Olivares was gonna win. I, For sure, I was gonna fold on the pressure, and that's exactly what he did and. Like on my my odds coming into Sheffield, like everyone had Gustav Hedlund as the underdog as well, and I was like, yeah, no I'm one looking for him. I'm looking for him, and I was like, I wanted him to place top three. Honestly, 
Yeah. I, I was looking at his training and I was like, this guy's going to out-total Kaiko and Gavin Aiden. Mm -hmm. And Carlos was like, bro, he's like the full underdog. Yeah, yeah I have so much respect for that guy. Yeah, I know. I have so he's much really respect funny. for that guy. But yeah, I know. He seems like a very humble guy, yeah, you know. Yeah. So exactly. So you can really respect that. But yeah, I mean, I wanted Gustav to come top three. Mm. Um, you know what? Everyone had Delaney Wallace at the bottom. And yeah, I, he like, was injured, and then he just came there and had a really oh, good day. I'm not going to say I predicted he was going to do what he did, because I didn't. But I, I was, like, praying for him that he did well. Because yeah. I was like, bro, if I saw this Sheffield card and every single person put me at number 12... That would like that would mm. mess with me, you know. That would be like, bro, I have to prove these people wrong, and that's exactly mm -hmm. what he did. So, I do really respect that. And you know what? It was the last time he could do that because now Russell's coming. Yeah, yeah. He dropped eight sixty on a bad day. Yeah, that was a very bad day for him. I can't lie. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Sheffield I mean, sick. I mean, I don't think uh, talking about me and Danny talked about it yesterday, but. Uh, uh, you know uh, Joe Bornstein? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, his plan, uh, I've heard some rumors about his plan for the, uh, for the upcoming year. Um, he's moving to the 83s, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, is that yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he can, the thing is, uh, his plan is to do Nats this year, you know, uh, in America, sub-junior Nats or junior Nats. And then yeah. go to the Worlds, and if he gets a wild card for Sheffield, because uh, when you can predict his total, his total is insane. Like, think of it like maybe two uh, 95 squats, two 10, 215 bench, and like 350 deadlift. That's like 850, 855. So, yeah, um, he could be up he, there. His plan for this year, uh, yeah, is, I mean, I mean, his plan he, is he totaled like. He totaled 800 at USAPL yeah, Mega Nationals last year, didn't he? Like 820 yeah, at the Yeah, 820. That's what I was going to say. 820. So it's, it's very interesting because I do think he, he... Bro, this is a thing, right? Russell, Russell has been ahead for so long and he realizes that people are catching up to him. So... I don't, to be honest, I don't know how much time he thinks he has left in him because, in my opinion, his time is coming to an end. No, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I can read it up here. Like, um, his plan for this year is to uh, e uh, either get a wild card and, uh, you know, challenge Ross at Sheffield. And if he doesn't get that wild card, he will go all out uh, at Genie Worlds to fuck Ross over. So Russ can't get any any money at Sheffield. <laughs> like break the open world record. Exactly. I, I, I like imagine him going 850, 860 on yeah, at that's at like New World. Big percentage off Russell's. <laughs> I mean Russell is fucked. Man, that would piss Russ the fuck off. Yeah, yeah I mean, like I, I, piss him off. And he's a junior yeah. as well. He's like 20, 21 years old. That, but... He's insane. That's 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 a very good example of how the powerlifting scene's Developing. changing, right? Yeah. Because I saw from the stats last year for the the average age of the person who won was twenty eight. That was the mm, median was, age. Yeah, like so early, late twenties. Yeah, it was twenty eight, and it's the crazy thing. These guys are coming from USAPL. How old's Austin? Like twenty four, twenty five. Yeah, twenty five. He's not that old, is he? Yeah, he just. Yeah. Him, so uh, then there's Joe, which is a junior. There's Elliot, which is a sub junior. I think what we're looking at, honestly, is like a new era of powerlifting because yeah. all these younger kids are coming out, and they're just genetic phenoms. Exactly. As the sport of powerlifting grows, the champions are just going to get younger and younger because there's more and more people doing it. Yeah. Like. Even, exactly, this part like, is growing. Yeah, exactly. And I do think it's very good because, like, mm. it's getting to a point 10 years ago, you could not make a living off powerlifting. No. Like, That's you just couldn't. Like, you, you'd go to Worlds and you'd see, like, 
people who work regular you'd see teachers at worlds you know <laughs> and now yeah now there's people like Russ, there's people like john hack they're making it their full-time living and you know what i i do think it's very good and i do think powerlifting as a whole is shifting towards a very positive direction For as sure. it inches closer to becoming a world level sport like olympics you know? Yeah, I mean, like, look at yourself right now. You, we're sitting in a podcast. You think they did powerlifting podcast ten years ago? <laughs> yeah, and like, bro, even even if they did, it's like no one even knew it existed. You yeah, know exactly. So, and I I think, bro, the the big thing for the growth of powerlifting was social media. For sure, that was the that was the big thing that boosted it. Because when you think about it, like everyone. The percentage of people that go to the gym now compared to 10 years ago has obviously increased, right? But the idea of social media is like people sharing it around. If yeah. you're the, going to the gym and you bench 100 at 15 and you go and see a 15-year-old bench 170, you're going to be like, oh, it's really impressive. Yeah. Like, let me give him a follow, you know, so I can That's see how he's doing what he's doing. It's like 10 years ago, they didn't have that. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. dude, you have to look... You'd have to go out of your way to see these really strong people or if they were like that strong that they got on the news. So I do think powerlifting's going in a very positive shift. And yeah, I mean, it's very positive for us, for the sport. I don't, I don't know how long term I'm going to be in powerlifting. Like I'd mm. like, I'd like to qualify for Sheffield in my first or second year as a junior, mm-hmm. but after after that like i don't know how much more gas i'm gonna have in the tank hopefully Damn. hopefully it becomes an olympic sport for 2028 hopefully because it's in the world games at least. so so when you when exactly. you're saying you want to qualify as a junior uh you mean in the 105s or 120s 105s yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. so you go against ashton i don't then <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a big yeah. that's a big off the, the, the thing is right 120s is an extra 15 kilos if i have to do it i have to do it With but time. Yeah, yeah then you're fucked but, because you're against bob and rondell or rondell comes yeah year, rondell year. is coming back man <laughs> i'm staying in the one of five so the chance of the chance of beating ashton total. Is much higher than beating Rondell. Yeah, mm. yeah. Rondell yeah. is like, nah. I no, like mm. as far as to be like. Now that you bring Rondell up, as far as opens go up, like I heavily look up to that man because he is an For absolute sure. legend. And he watches YouTube. I. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Right? I love what. Yeah, it is. It mm. is. I look like he just seems like such a laid back and chill guy you know yeah, but yeah. as you were saying i still Ashton's believe in like, my, my guy bob nine forty one is like ashton totaled that at powerlifting american nationals day. yeah but it was a hard 941 right mm. and what's What's the percentage to qualify for Sheffield? 95% of the world record, yeah, right? Yeah, the world record is 95 plus. So, he's... It's, it's easy like 900. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> easy. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I mean y- you can also think of it like this. You know, Ashton, he came in at... Like, he trained like three times a week, I think. Because he's in the military, so he does all of his fitness tests. Yeah, so... I I've thought about that as well and I'm like for with Ashton like he could get called away f- because of military at any time. Yeah. And that would completely screw everything for him, but I like there's no honor in beating him if he's like going on and off like that, especially cuz he's in the military. He's doing yeah. you got to respect what he's doing, you know. Exactly. But so, I I think he's still capable of a 1000 kilograms at 105 Ashton. I still believe in him. Oh. Yeah, he, 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 yeah. So, hmm. like nine forty-one. That's 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 on a very very bad day and I mean, from a very long bad H- period Hamza's of training. total world records eight thirty-six. Hmm? If I if I beat that's that next year with a yeah with about eight forty eight fifty, which is 
I've I've talked to my coach about it with an extra twelve kilos of body weight. It's a hundred percent possible. Yeah. Like, yeah, you I know, uh, yeah. I like we we know it's possible as long as I lock in after this like little break I'm having. But after that, um, I mean, I definitely think it's possible. If I total eight fifty with another year in sub juniors, that's what's gonna. That's what's going to be like my statement to powerlifting, you yeah, know? Sure. Yeah. Because, like, Hamza got a lot of attention, but he couldn't perform it in comp. That's, no, that's the difference. If I, if I can execute in comp and be like, I have another year in sub juniors, I'm totaling 850. Like, you better put me on the radar, you know? Yeah. Because, yeah, exactly. what did Nonso do? Young, youngest person to total 900. Yeah. First year Ooh. juniors. Let's go. What if I did it last year sub juniors? Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Mm. So you would say that's your short term goals. What about your like long term? Like you said, you might leave after like uh, as a junior. <laughs> well, this is this is why I said before I respect Hamza for what he's done, right? Because beyond powerlifting. I'm I'm in a lot of different sorts of sorts of business, etc. Like my coach is also a multi millionaire, right? So mm -hmm. it, it it heavily ties in like me being surrounded by him so much and I it it's definitely a positive influence, but like for me in the long run, if powerlifting I have I have that love for the sport still, but I feel like in a few years, one day that love might disappear and the only incentive for me to do it, it will be for financial gain. And I think that's what Hamza got to as well. So it'll get to a point where like, yeah, um, I've made eight figures. I'm, I'm 19, I'm 20, whatever. Like, do I need to keep doing this? Is like, is this really what I love? Because right now it is what I love. And in five years that might change and mm. that's that's why right like i don't think i'm gonna leave the sport until i at least go to sheffield yeah once right. like that drive will never burn until then but after i go to sheffield i'll see but you know what maybe i'll go to sheffield and i'll be like i really want to do this again mm. Yeah, because that I think looks that's like a very, a very good meet. And over the next few years, like, as I was saying before, my point earlier, how the power thing seems like shifting and how the age oh, no. is like getting younger and younger, right? So, <laughs> like, in a few years, we'll be seeing, like, not even in a few years, like, the year after next year, bro, like, yeah. we could be seeing fucking guy. Nonso and Rondell. And Bob in the 120s, like, that would be amazing. Mm. <laughs> and, like, Joshua and Goka, like, I really like those boys. So, I think I have, I'd have to at least compete with them. And that's, that's why I was pretty gutted that I couldn't go internationally this year. Yeah, because yeah. I, really, I really wanted to meet those boys in person. Because even the American boys, they all seem like really good people. And I think that's why... I will stay in powerlifting for a good amount of time because beyond the yeah, sport yeah. Mm. and be it being about myself, I think it's also largely about the relationships you create, you for know? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you, you guys are on a podcast. You'll know that more than anything. Like, yeah, you, yeah. you got on a podcast with that guy who went to Sheffield, Carlos. Mm. You got on with Elliot. It's like beyond being the strongest people in the world. It's like building the relationships sure. with new people exactly. and having people who have very similar interests to you, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's the same in between me and Lucas. Like he lives in Stockholm, like five hours away from me and we still like hang out and like we go up to each other's houses and shit like that. Yeah, we exactly. The sport. And exactly, bro. And that's exactly, that's so good. Yeah. That's so good, you know? Mm. And I think, that's that's what powerlifting is beyond just lifting really heavy sure. weights, you know? Yeah. And I think that's a side that people don't see. It's like what what the social media sees, not even what social media sees, what like just most people see is like, oh, you get on a platform and do a few lifts, but like, bro, look at all these 
friends I'm making from the sport. Yeah. Look at this team I have behind me that's so dedicated to just me doing well. For sure. Yeah. So I do I do admire it as a sport and I do admire how it's growing as a sport. So I don't know. Maybe bro, the short it might not be short term to be honest, but it's just it's, nice. it's not about the competition. I don't I don't care about the competition. I'm I'm willing to go against whoever because <laughs> it's it's never like there's never beef or anything. It's just like we're both there to do our best. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know. Maybe I'll be in the 120s as an open. Like, mm. we'll see. I don't know. 120 pluses definitely isn't happening. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm Allow not. that. Allow that. <laughs> you don't want to become fat. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's a thing with me as well, right? Because uh, I did start in the gym very skinny and i don't think i yeah. could have gone to powerlifting unless i was happy with my physique and i only got into powerlifting when i got to that stage and like even like if i gain too much weight I, i'm very dissatisfied with myself there as well mm. so uh, i could never be a 120 plus because the my self body image just like it's it's always been a problem for me you know yeah so yeah. that's like that's something that's always going to be a thing there. So like yeah. if I'm too fat at 120s, I might I might just go 105s or I might just compete as yeah. a light 120, you know? Hey guys, yeah. uh, like, I'm you just see... going to go to the bathroom quickly. You two can continue, all right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> My bad. Yeah. Go. I'll be back. Go. go. Nah, bro, bro really needed that toilet break. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, what, though? I respect that. I respect that you guys are getting on the podcast early because... I was I was thinking of starting one later on, except it wasn't going to be like purely powerlifting, you know? No. Yeah. For me, because uh, the idea of social media for me is like beyond being an athlete, I want to help like younger people get better, you know? Like mm-hmm. there's also that side to powerlifting for me and just going to the gym in general. It's like, I don't think, I don't think I'll burn out of the sport very quickly. Like someone like Hamza and I'm like, like, I'm sorry I'm using Hams as an example so much. No. He's just like a very primary example, you know? Yeah. Because like my my mission in powerlifting is beyond that. So the idea of me doing powerlifting is like to push younger people to be the best version of themselves. Exactly. Because yeah, you know, like me in powerlifting is it's what I love doing and it's me pushing myself to be the best version of myself. And that's what that's what it is, right? Because like alongside powerlifting, I'm trying to grow the social media. I'm trying to help younger kids out just to become better people. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I've like been in the sport a while. Like like you said, uh, our goal with this podcast is to grow the sport, and uh, Connect. you know exactly. Uh, it's, it's very good intention, right? And it's like yeah. even even if I started a podcast, it would be absolutely no competition with you because it had almost been a <laughs> different course. niche. I'd be going yeah. like the the idea of me starting a podcast is like I wanna I wanna get other motivational people, other people that like people look up to like not necessarily like david goggins but like (laughs) just just people just people that like other younger kids look at and be like they're really inspired by these people's stories and like i want to spread those people's stories to the world because i think it would be really good to just make like kids better again because you you see all you see how the world's changing so fast and like it's except not in the right way you feel me (laughs) yeah yeah so it's it's all good intention man it's all good intention yeah (laughs) okay so one thing i want to i want to take up before we get to an end yeah is uh the nick you drama Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> we saw your story. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Do you do you have any like uh, beef with Nikki? How did you get that information? No, I look. The, um, the whole story. I I don't have any beef with him. I 
like I don't even really care about him to be honest but in the end I think so obviously there's there's kids that look up to him there's kids that look up to me there's kids that look up to many people right and uh, the fact that he claims natural to his audience of younger kids is giving them a false perception of what's for sure you know and I don't like, I don't care about him, but I also don't agree with him as a person. And although I do regret fucking posting yeah. that shit on my story, like, like, I think the truth would have come out either ways. But no, how the I, fuck like, did he get that information? It's, it's just about, it's just about him lying, you know, like, yeah, it's don't lie about that shit. Because you're giving, you're giving your audience of these kids that look up to you because they think you're natural. You're giving this audience of kids mm. that look up to you like a false perception of what's possible and you're just giving them a delusional version of exactly. what reality is. So that's why... That's why... I re like, I reposted in the first place with the intention of that, but I'm like, I don't... I looked at it after and I was like, obviously I can't change what I've done, but... I didn't need to be the guy who spread that because the truth comes out either ways, you know? Yeah, the yeah, truth yeah. will always prevail. So, I mean, I think he he's getting away with it now because he, he definitely still is getting away with it, but... Yeah, he, think, he just ignores it. I think he will suffer the consequences one day, but I don't think I should be the person to do that to him. Mm. And... The uh, interesting thing is, is like, if he does another comp, he's going to get exposed. Yeah. Yeah, now, I don't know. I now think he's, he's just not... going to go try to be like John Hack or something. Just go pound for pound and untested stuff. Yeah. Nah, I mean, mm. put, it, put it this way, right? He said that, um, he said that he got on MK, just MK, just MK. Yeah, all right. Just MK, mm. when he went on his bold arc or whatever, and that was that was when he was competing, like when he broke the open world record. Mm. You see, that guy had no hair, so <laughs> I don't know. he said that, and I'm like, if you really think he own, firstly, if you really think he only did MK, you're delusional. I mean, you got, like, and also, you jacked really quickly. if you. If you think he was natural at that comp, then you're also delusional. And in that sense, I feel very bad for Nabil because Nick, you broke bro's world record as a 16 year old, which yeah, is yeah. like, bro, that has to tear your ego down a little bit. So yeah. I, I do feel very bad for Nabil, but I, I don't know. To be honest, I I hope like in some way the world record gets revoked and it goes back to Nabil because yeah, I, mean, the, the I thing feel about really that bad stuff for him. Is that if it's not an IPF like record, then it doesn't. It's just like in a social media thing. It's not really. And still, authentic. I think don't think they will take away the world record because they can't prove that he was that he was using at the time. Like you know, uh, you know the 59th open world record. Uh, Sergey Fedosenko. Exactly. Uh, yeah, he got and... popped, and he still has all his IPF records. Yeah. Oh. So. So yeah. It's... Yeah, no, you are right. They can't prove that he was he wasn't on at that comp, but it's it's quite obvious that he's on now. Yeah. If you got, like, I there's mean, no way people when can he, see that, right? When he pulled the you know four hundred, um, me and Danny yeah, talked. It wasn't even. It wasn't no, even no, that for me, bro. Except, like, uh, when he when he pulled that, me and Danny talked about it, like, I, I'm usually not the person that, you know, says that people take zeros All and stuff. people out, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 like, uh, but I don't, when, I don't when you see, like, he's, a... he's extremely, extremely jacked. He's like, I've never seen something like it and at, a, at a such a young age. And I don't know, I just got suspicious. <laughs> Yeah, so I yeah. wasn't shocked. And like, uh, I'm not usually the one to make drama about it, which is why I don't know I did. I like felt something personal. Like, I don't know what it is. I swear I felt something personal. But like, I mean, it was it was obvious like yeah, that he yeah. was on. 
And it's very interesting because if you've seen his training, he's he goes through like waves of mo- being motivated to yeah, go to the cycle. gym and that. And he's like, <laughs> bro, you got off cycle. Exactly. And <laughs> like, I remember when he first came back and started posting again, he was like, I went from 160 pounds to 180 pounds in one month. The training motivation's back. I'm going to lock in on powerlifting. No, you just started your steroid cycle again, bro. I mean, we should have him on the podcast. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> but like, the thing how is... are you going to deny that? You gained 20 pounds in one month. You yeah. added, you repped your one rep max on squats for eight in one <laughs> month. And then... You didn't deadlift for the whole month, and within two weeks, you hit a 30 kilo PR. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I like, think we should. Round you're it not up. even trying to hide it. <laughs> the thing about it's... Nick is, I, I respect him because the 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 one good thing he does is that he he you know he motivates people, especially young people. It's so many young people that have got into the sport of powerlifting because of him. So that's still good, but of course you you shouldn't take steroids, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I respect him in the fact that there's there's a point you get to, right? Like, all three of us, there's no amount of steroids we could take. We would like we would not improve like that, you know. Yeah, no, it's also genetics. I mean, ob- yeah. Obviously, there like there is, but if we took as much as much as whatever he's taking, I guarantee you, we wouldn't progress that much, you know. So. I think what I think he should have done is he should have just come clean about it because yeah, like yeah. you're an 82.5 kilo 17 year old. Yeah. You're a dickhead for doing steroids at that age, but yeah. it's also a 400 kilo deadlift as a 17 year old, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's impressive regardless. It's just like, why do you have to lie about it? You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think, I think water needs to reevaluate their drug testing as well yeah, it's like I mean, it's if you're not in the ipf it's uh, i'm not gonna trust it maybe usapl but like, otherwise it's just like I don't, I don't know if you guys have seen like greg duchette has done videos on russell or he oh he's God. examined the bloods he bro <laughs> yeah. he doesn't think he's natty like you can uh, see why you don't think he's natty but yeah. it's no, I, I think, I think it is natty. interesting because yeah i like to believe he's natty but i wouldn't be surprised if he isn't you know yeah you know what uh, i mean I and it's and it's like I would be very surprised his, because he have out of me testing. Yeah, I mean, if it turns out that he's using, I mean, the whole IPS IPF is going to fall apart because. But uh, that, that's that's the exact point, right? You you just proved the point. Is think of, think about what you just said, right? If he gets caught, the whole IPF is like everyone. Everyone's just gonna be like, I, the IPF isn't legit anymore. Fuck yeah. the IPF. So, yeah. regardless, if he got caught in his out of meat testing, bro, you cannot tell me the IPF wouldn't hide that. No, exactly. That looked so bad I mean, on they would their have brand. To just ban him. Exactly, on but that like- would. That would yeah. completely take you away from their revenue and that would ruin their hopes for being an Olympic sport because the Olympics would come to them and be like, well, you think, well, you had Russell who was your world champion for three years and he just got popped for steroids. Yeah. I mean, you should like, see weightlifting though. Like, Luke yeah. Sergio, all <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> They're all I know. stuff. It's being evaluated by yeah, the yeah. Olympics. They're thinking They're removing it, it as a sport. But... <laughs> That that's my point, right? If if Russell got popped and Russell got banned, the Olympics would come and be like, "This guy was competing in your federation for ten years, and he just got popped for <laughs> I mean, steroids." Five years. Firstly, <laughs> how long how long was he running steroids for? You don't know that. He could have been doing it the whole time, and that's also if he has gotten away with it for that long, how many other people are doing it and getting away with yeah. it? Exactly. Because so. That's the thing, right? If Russell is unnatty, if he failed a drug test, they would not do anything because it would ruin it would ruin the IPS reputation and it would ruin their hopes. And then they're gonna have to look at USAPL become the next fucking nah. Olympic Federation. <laughs> Bro, what are you talking about? 
<laughs> now you're just... <laughs> all right. All right. Let's let's round it off. Let's round it off. Should we should we do the questions? Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, the yeah. equip yeah. questions. Okay, so we have some questions that we always ask ask our um the right. people we take on the podcast. Uh, uh, just general stuff. So first off, um, what kind of music do you listen to? And do you have one song that you can recommend, like a PR song, for example? Mm. In the gym, yeah. All right, my my music taste varies. Let me <laughs> let, let me pull up the playlist. Right. Ever ever since Nonso has been like um posting to this one song way too much <laughs> lately, and I have like five versions of it on my playlist. You know this one? Wait. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. God of War edits. I can't lie. I've been listening to that way too much lately. But to be honest, I don't I don't really listen to the hardcore music like the most most of the people do, right? Cuz yeah. I think it's wrong because I don't like to draw something else as external motivation for my sets or when oh, hitting yeah. a PR, right? So I, I have a very different view on it compared to other people, but I don't. I play very relaxing music, to be honest. Like I play <laughs> music that I just listen to outside of the gym because what that does is like I can't rely on hype music. I can't rely on hype music to, um, yeah. like push me through my set. Yeah, you can save it to, for like, like competition. Yeah. And also, yeah. I have to find somewhere mentally to push through all those sets, you know, because without the music. It's it's all in the head, right? Without the music, you have to do it yourself. You can't, you can't, like, I don't listen. If I listen to music that makes me angry, it'll make me think of things that make me angry that will motivate me to do my set. But what if I just listen to relaxing music and I get that mental willpower to push through the set yeah, myself? Yeah, like Rondell, he you know what without I mean? music. No headphones, just completely quiet. Who does? That's a good point. Rondell. Yeah. Home gym as well. Exactly, exactly. He's just in that the guy quiet. is an absolute inspiration. I love Rondell, bro. I Who love should... Rondell. All right. okay. No music, no nothing is crazy. Oh, uh, what was that song's name? Yeah, it's called Noir. But yeah, nah, I don't know. I've been listening to that, but apart from that, I don't really like. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I don't really listen to anything mm. else. Like, I don't want right, to sound right. boring. I just, I just listen to Kanye, bro. Hey, that's based. That's based. <laughs> okay, so favorite meal. Favorite meal. Yeah. Uh steak, wagyu beef. Based. Yes, I like my wagyu yes. beef. Yes. yes. Good and answer. And then I just like mashed mashed potato and vegetables. That's nice. That's, that's, nice. What. that's not as good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's like <laughs> I I have that meal like once every couple of days. To be honest, it's mm, it's okay. expensive. Yeah. But it's good. Um, Australian the real question beef. is, yeah. The real question is, how do you guys like your steak? Mm. Um, it depends on the cut. Mm. It depends if if it's a uh, higher quality meat. I can eat it rare. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Otherwise, of course, you you don't go over medium rare. For, yeah, opinion. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I on my birthday I went to this steakhouse and they had mm. A5 Japanese Wagyu, which is like mm -hmm. the most expensive, yeah. expensive. Oh, it was too expensive. I got A4, Man, but the same. I also went to like Sweden's best steakhouse like at my birthday. But yeah. I get that medium rare, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Mm, sure. Okay, okay. I have some mixed but... feelings about that. No, no, I know. I. I can completely agree with why you would get it rare though, right? Because one of my mates got a um one of my mates got it rare and it tasted like I was almost regretting getting it medium rare, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I ate you, you know what Kobe is? Kobe steak. It's also like an A five Wagyu. It's it's an area in Japan. It's like different areas. So the oh, yeah, beef... yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I ate the Kobe that came from the you know, city of Kobe. Uh, it was also like an A5 version of it. It cost like you know a thousand dollars a kilo, so Bru it's pretty expensive. 
Uh, and I ate that, and yeah, uh, like everything just tastes bad. Tastes bad now, but <laughs> I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, I go to a steakhouse on my birthday, and I cook steak for myself now. Like, bro, this should <laughs> taste bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know what you mean. <laughs> okay, so uh, favorite exercise in the gym? It, it it doesn't have to be something from the SPD, but it can also be like accessory stuff. But uh, you can um... anything. Bench. Bench, oh, good. No, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be yeah. honest. I've always yeah. just, I've always just been a bench guy, you know. Like, all right, all right. bro, I'm literally, I'm taking a break from powerlifting for like two, three months. I'm still benching. I'm still <laughs> benching. I don't <laughs> care. It's like being, being able to go into the gym and bench is like I have a reason to go to the gym. It's like, yeah, I don't. I don't, I'm never unmotivated to go to the gym if I'm benching. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, I know what you mean. Because for me, it's like m my favorite exercise is squats because I'm a, like best at it. But if I, if I only could do one of the lifts, I would do bench because that's the, that's the most, most fun in my opinion. Like, yeah, long term. <laughs> uh, uh, you're the type of guy to choose like squats. <laughs> exactly. To be like, I like doing my sumo deadlifts. <laughs> the next time I'm squat. <laughs> be honest with yourself. Reevaluate your life, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, uh, favorite movie, if you watch movies, or like a TV show? That's a very good question. Um, If I'm going to be honest, I don't, I don't really watch movies anymore because... <laughs> To be honest, all I'm doing is I'm either studying for school, I'm either learning, learning new things, or I'm in the gym. So, mm. uh, when I watch movies, I don't know. There's there's so many like good movies, you know what I mean? But I don't know. I've always I've always been a fan of Leonardo DiCaprio. Like Wolf of Wall Street's always been like yeah. There's there's no amount of times I could watch that and get sick of it, you know? That's cool. Because yeah. the whole, like, plot of the story is just great. But, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I'd say... I'd say Wolf of Wall Street, to be honest. I, that sounds pretty generic. Yeah, but, no, that's, that's good. Um, in your opinion, uh, best lifter in the world right now? Regardless of, you know, weight uh, of, like... Best it, it pound or... Jesus Olivares until that Sheffield's performance. Okay. Damn. So, but uh, it's it it'll be between a few people, you know. Ah, hmm. uh, in in my opinion, it's my personal opinion. All I right. think it's Rondell That's because I think. 600 dots at 120 body weight is absolutely ridiculous and he's the only guy out of the 74 slash 75 to even do it yeah. so i think it's probably between rondell or rondell or joe to be honest like, joe Borenstein. i would put i would put joe in my top like five he's right. joe Borenstein. like 820 as a 75 kilo yeah, junior. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. So not Perky? Joe is the best junior in the world. That's my opinion. Joe's yeah. probably the best junior in the world. But opens it would between be between Perk and um Asus. Rondell. Yeah. The Rondell, thing is yeah. everyone everyone says RP ten perk, RP ten perk, but we haven't seen that yet, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's all an assumption until he actually goes all out so that's that's my opinion right like yeah. at chef after sheffield next year i'm gonna be like yeah he's the goat no question because he'll actually try but sure. we haven't seen him try enough for him to be that guy you know yeah i mean i mean uh, have you heard the rumors at like world games because they'll only have uh, like three weight classes i think yeah they match and, uh, and then do points exactly so Perk will like go up, go up to like 78, 79 kilos, and then beat Dross. That's his plan. Yeah. Is that what they talked about on the podcast? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. King of the lifts. King of the lifts one. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> nah. That would be Russ, crazy. Bro, I, I know Russ is like, I'm not going to let it happen, but... No okay, ass cool. is getting beaten by 75, bro. Let's let's be real. Right. <laughs> okay, so last question. Uh, if you could go back in time to when you first started, like, going to the gym or powerlifting, uh, and uh, you could, like, talk to yourself, and uh, what one advice would you give uh, to your younger self? To your younger self? Uh, if I was to give one piece of advice to my younger self, um... It would be to do your back down sets. Oh my god! <laughs> All right. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna lie. I I have I have a workout every now and then when I'll miss a back down set now, and I've been powerlifting for over a year. So like, right. it's yeah. like embarrassing to say that. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna lie, but it's like if I if I were to tell myself something, then I'd be like, do your back down sets because with the amount of back down sets I like skipped back in the day and I just do my top set, I do like one back down set and then I'd be done. Mm -hmm. It's like, I would be so much stronger firstly and now I wouldn't have a problem at all doing back down sets because they'd be instinctive, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. I think Kirk used to also skip his back downs. That made me feel a lot better. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, yeah, man, this was really, really fun. We must have you on another another time uh, to continue yeah, talking. Well, that was great. It was great. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for having me on. I yeah, really I appreciate you're that. Taking the time to get Do you on. Do you like uh, shout outs, sponsors, or anything? Coaching. You want to shout out? Uh, I don't. I don't like to sell my things on podcasts. Okay. Right. Okay. Humble. You know, the podcast is your marketing. It's not mine. Yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Man. So. Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, I appreciate have... you guys for having me on. Yeah. yeah. Have a good cool. night. Have a good time, man.